Balrai, Balrai, Balrai. So we look at ourselves and we say to ourselves, what is the answer to a problem? Well, there are a couple of things you can do to help you find the answer, even if you did your math sort of haphazardly, okay? So let's see here. What we got, units and dimensional analysis. We've got a problem. I think the examples are always the best way to get things done. So a car travels. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. The car travels a distance of 5,000 meters at a speed of 35 meters per second. How long was the car traveling? So it looks as though we have a couple of things. We got 5,000 meters, all right? Travels a distance of 5,000 meters. So we've got a distance, all right? We'll call that X of 5,000 meters. Okay, at a speed of 35 meters per second. That sounds like a speed to me, so we write it as V, the representation for speed, meters per second. How long was the car traveling? Without even knowing the equation for speed, you can solve for this, of course, if you look at the units. Of course, the, the equation helps, but um, let's say that you didn't know the equation for this particular problem and you just kind of shoved math at the, at, the, at the problem and hoped that something would happen from it. So there are three ways that this problem can work out. We've got either you take the distance divided by the speed, you got the distance times the speed, or you got the speed divided by the distance. Now this gives us three completely different num numerical answers. Numerical, numerical answers. Um, however, using units and dimensional analysis. We can solve for this problem based on just context clues alone. How long? We're looking for a time, question mark. Okay, so we're looking for a time. So what we should find in our answer is something that is a unit of time, all right? So let's take a look at the various things we've got down here. I'm gonna start over here on the right. I think you can guess that the one on the left is right based on just looking at the units. But let's run through it. We've got 35 divided by 5,000. We end up with a number of 0 .007. Now, if we look at the units, we've got meters per second, which we'll write right here on top. And we have meters on the bottom, which we'll write here on the bottom. So meters per second divided by meters, all right? Now, another way to write that is equal to meters per second times the reciprocal of the bottom, which you guys recall from early math, probably sixth, seventh, eighth, I'm not sure exactly when, um, but we take the reciprocal of the bottom, one over M instead of M over one, all right? Reciprocal, one over M, the M's cancel. You are left with one over seconds, and that leaves you with this unit right here, one over second. So we've got 0 .007 per second. Now, I am no Einstein, but it doesn't sound like per second is a unit of time. Let's go to this one, 5,000 meters times 35 meters per second squared. Oh no, that's per second squared, sorry, that's a holdover. 35 meters per second equals 175,000, okay? Now let's look at the units. We've got meters, meters over one, times meters per second, right? Times meters per second, times meters per second. That leaves us with a unit of meters squared per second. So 175,000 meters squared per second. When I think of time, I don't think of the unit meters squared per second. I don't say, how, how long did it take you to get through the hallway? Well, it took me five meters squared per second. That doesn't make any sense at all. So that means that this one is probably also incorrect. All right, we find ourselves over on the last option. We take the distance divided by the speed. All right, we find the number 142.9, whatever. It matters what the unit is, right? So we've got meters on top, right there, divided by, divided by, meters per second, meters per second. Now, once again, if we're dividing by a fraction, all we have to do is take the reciprocal of that and multiply it by the top. So meters over one times seconds over meters. Okay, we took the reciprocal of this fraction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we find that meters will cancel top and bottom. Um, and we're left with seconds over one. So that leaves us with just seconds. So 142.9 seconds. Now, when I think of time, I think of seconds, hours, minutes, et cetera, et cetera, years. Years, I say. Um, well, it looks like this is a unit of time. That means this is probably the correct answer. All right? Even without knowing the equation, this is probably the correct answer. Well, let's check here. Velocity or speed equals distance over 
time. This is the equation for speed. Well, we have 35 on this side equals 5,000 meters over time, which we do not know. We do a tiny bit of algebra here. We flip the positions of the T and the 35. We are at 5,000 meters over 35, sorry, meters per second, 35 meters per second. And guess what? That equals time. Look at this. That equation looks like this over here. That means that this answer is the correct one, even without knowing the equation. All right, this doesn't work for everything, of course. It does work with these simpler ones. Um, if there's something that has a complex unit that goes with it, like meters per second squared, you gotta be careful, all right? You just gotta be a little bit more careful. But otherwise, this is a good way to check to see if your answer makes sense.